Hey guys, this is Scott from Tri-County Metals and I'm here with Brian Hubble. And today we have another installment of Growing Your Business with Metal. And today we are tackling a highly searched topic, Brian. Mm -hmm. What are we talking about today? We're talking about how to measure your roof. How to measure your roof. You know, one of the top hits we have on our website is can you install metal over shingle? Um, it's a great question. To leave the shingles on is an option afforded by our Florida product approval. So now the question is, why would you take the shingles down to the deck? What are some reasons we would do that? Yeah, so th there's benefits to doing it both ways. Uh, obviously, if you leave the layer of shingles on the roof, uh, there could be some opinions about you know, the budget of the project for that and the amount of time that it takes to put that new metal roof on. Uh, but there are a lot of benefits to actually tearing down that roof down to the decking. I mean, absolutely, you can expect that deck for any potential issues. So Florida does require a certain nail pattern on that, on that decking. So if it's an older home, you haven't had a new roof put onto the house, it may not be brought up to the current Florida building, uh, building code requirements. So uh, tearing down there does allow you to inspect that. Uh, also allows you if there might have been any leaks. Uh, if there was any leaks in your previous roof, you're going to be able to find where those problem areas are. So uh, there, there are definitely benefits to it. And so on this segment, we're actually assisted by the team at Direct Metal Roofing. And we have Sean on the roof, our guy on the roof, and he's going to demonstrate the first thing we're going to do to investigate this topic. And what, what are we looking at? What's he, what's he doing, Brian? Um, so he's going to be measuring this roof out. Uh, there's a lot of key components that you need uh, in order to be able to properly order a metal roof for your house. So here we got Sean, he's, he's on the ladder. What's what's he doing? What's his first step there in this topic we're just talking about? Well, what he's going to do first is determine how many layers of roofing are on this house right now. Is it one? Is it two? And also he can see the underlayment and the decking. Right. And uh, you, you want to verify that. And how do we do that? <laughs> you, just, you just look. You just jelly. Look underneath the shingles that are at the edge, and <laughs> right. you can see the deck. And that's an important thing when you talk about Florida block approvals. Uh, it's it's typically specified as as plywood. There are some cases where OSB is um, is allowable, depending on different factors. But it's important to understand what the decking is that you're working with. So what, what's what's the, the number one pro tip probably before you climb that ladder? What should you be taking with you before you climb up that ladder, so you don't have to get right back down? Is take a notepad and a pencil up there with you. Notepad and, and pencil. And don't forget your tape measure. <laughs> tape measure. <laughs> Guys, if if, if a, somebody shows up to give you a price on the metal roof um, and they're going to measure the roof, they don't have a tape measure, like just send them packing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. come on. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. No. I mean, there's satellite and stuff out there, but you know, good old tape measure, there's no substitute for it. Uh, what's, the, what's the first thing we're going to measure up there? Yeah, so the first measurement that you're going to get on your roof is the what we call eave to ridge measurement. That's going to give you the total length of those panels that you need on that roof. Uh, your eave is, of course, that bottom edge. That's kind of down where your gutters are, those type of things. Uh, so from that bottom edge all the way up to the ridge cap, uh, that's going to be your first measurement there. Now, you want to make sure that we accommodate an overhang for that metal roof, for that metal roof panel. Okay. Uh, typically, that's about one inch. And it's going to overhang the edge there, allows the water to run off the roof nicely uh, in any type of rain. Uh, and then you're going to want to measure all the way up to that ridge cap. But keep in mind, if you are ventilating that ridge cap, you want to bring that a little bit shorter so that we can cut out the top of that ridge to allow for the hot air in your attic to escape. Absolutely. So, so the great, great tips there. We know we want at least an inch past the edge um, to accommodate for that overhang of one inch no more and one inch is, is really a, a good rule of thumb and then make sure you understand in advance you know what you're doing on the ventilation topic with that you know another pro tip is is to especially if it's a if it's a large roof to take that measurement in multiple places absolutely i mean we we all know this is construction okay uh some of these houses you know some of your houses could have been built in the 50s 60s 70s even the early 1900s. So uh, the the likelihood that that house is perfectly square, probably pretty slim. <laughs> right, right. right. So, yeah. so you want to verify in numerous areas on that plane of the roof if that panel length is the same. 
Because obviously you don't want to you don't want to be ordering a bunch of material that's going to be wasteful if you need to trim something shorter, something like that. You want to verify that measurement. So you know, ordering material. Keep in mind that that's the reason we're doing this. So let's let's digress just a quick moment and talk about coverage. Um, so you know, we have all types of folks watching this. You know, we could be talking about an exposed panel, standing seam. Um, you know, for Tri County Metals, the two most popular panels is our ultra rib and TCM log. Um, when it comes to coverage, you know, just as those two as an example, sort of just simple comparison, mm -hmm. what, what would, what do we need to know as we're, you know, uh, preparing these measurements as far as uh, figuring the, the panels? Sure. So, so we've got our length measurement already. Okay. So we know what the, what the length of the panel is going to be. But when we're talking about coverage, we're talking about the width of the panel for that. Uh, so your ultra rib panel is a 36 inch wide panel. Uh, it has 36 inches of coverage. So that's going to give you the measurement of how many of those panels you need in order to cover that entire roof plan. The standing seam, our TCM lock panel, that's a 16 inch coverage. So obviously you need a lot more panels to cover up that area with the, with the concealed fastener roofing. Right. So so some great, great understanding there up front as far as, as what the goal is on the end game on what you're trying to order is gonna play into that. So we have that measured and you know, uh, it, if the home has gable ends, if you took that measurement, guess what? You've also just figured out what your rake or gable trim should be. Correct, because the, the rake and gable trim, it obviously runs top to bottom on the side of your roof. Uh, you also have your ridge measurement. So that's the width of your roof from one end to the other. Now that, that ridge measurement is also what you're gonna to use to calculate how many panels you need. So if you're using a 36 inch wide panel, you divide that out by how long your ridge is and that's gonna tell you your count of panels all the way across. So that's probably the easiest measurement. You're up there, hopefully the weather is really good. You're up there measuring your roof, you're <laughs> nice and safe. You're just walking that ridge, pulling that tape. From A to B, boom, you're yeah, done. Because it's not hot at all in Florida. No, so, not at all. Yeah. You know, your, your shoes aren't sticking to that roof or anything. No, nothing like that. Right. Um, so then, you know, another critical uh, measurement then, Brian, we need to talk about is, is valleys. Yes. Yeah, so if your house is designed where it has, uh, you know, multiple facets, and maybe it has a back room that's coming off the backside of that house, um, you're going to have a section of your house where two roof lines come together. And that roof line, that point is called the valley. And you want to be able to measure that valley because we have specific metal that goes into that section as well to allow all that water to run off. So when you're measuring that valley, there's a few measurement tips that you want to be able to be sure that you accommodate for, just like what we talked about for the overhang. Right. So when you're looking at it, uh, just like the overhang, we're going to extend it an inch. You want to keep in mind and, and visualize because every intersection might be a little bit different, but that valley trim needs to go to the very extent of where those, those panels will converge at the bottom um, to make sure that you're adding enough length. And it's going to probably be more than one inch, probably be maybe two or maybe even three inches, um, just depending on the, on the circumstance. But then at the top, you know, we have that those valleys converging. Uh, we want to make sure that we have an overlap of those two valley trims and enough length um, of that complete run mm -hmm. um, to, to do that. Because um, yeah, that's gonna allow those two valleys to intersect completely uh, and the uh, roofing contractor or yourself are able to overlap those properly so that you can completely seal them so there's no water intrusion. Absolutely, and then uh, when it comes to trim, it's, it's probably talked about the conversion and the, the coverage on um, panels. What about trim? If we've got, let's say, uh, a ridge line that's 36 feet, mm -hmm. what are we ordering for trim? Sure. So, so all of our trim pieces they come in a 10 foot run. So, if you've got a 36 foot ridge, then you're going to be ordering four pieces of trim for there. So, you're going to get 40 feet of coverage. Now obviously, you're going to overlap those a few inches as well uh, as you're laying them down. But the four sticks of that is going to be adequate for 36 foot. So when we talk about trim, 10 foot increments, good to know that helps you in ordering. When it comes to, to W Valley, um, there I know there is a critical accessory uh, we wanna make sure we don't overlook. And, and what is that? So that is your foam closure on that panel. So when, when your panels are coming down into that valley, obviously valleys 
run up at angles. So as that panel comes down into that valley, you're gonna trim that off at the, at the same angle that that valley is coming down. Now, what does that do? That leaves openings in the bottom of the panel. Where, what, what happens with those valleys? Every single ounce of water that comes onto your house when it rains gets funneled right into that valley so that it can run off, okay? Uh, if we left those openings at the bottom of those panels wide open, all of that water would pour right into your roof. Uh, so we have foam closures that go in there that are watertight that seal up those openings right from the end. The whole purpose of what we're talking about is for you to put an order together, but it's also worth noting that we do have an awesome in-house CAD team that can put a whole diagram for you together. But before you order, should you choose to do a, a CAD, which is great, is very accurate, what do we want to do, Brian? We always want to verify those measurements, okay? You want to uh, throw a tape. You want to throw a tape on that thing. Yeah, you want to make sure that it is accurate to the inch of exactly what you want. Throw a tape. Throw a tape. Not not like take your tape measure and throw it. Like get, get your <laughs> your bahonkis up there and measure that thing. Right. Now, you, there's a lot of other things that will go with these orders as well. We've got accessories. Uh, so we, we talked about all the actual pieces of metal that you'd be getting on this roof. but we have a full line of accessories that you're gonna to need to install this roof as well. Uh, that comes from screws, uh, and we'll calculate how many you need for that. Uh, you also have roof boots. So everybody, I don't know if everybody actually knows what those pipes are that are coming out of the, the top of your house, but they're ventilation pipes. Uh, they're for your sinks uh, and things inside of your house. They're for ventilation for your dryer, your washing machine, all those type of things. So uh, those pipes that are coming out of your house they have an actual specific boot that goes around them to make sure that that doesn't leak as well once you install your nice brand new Tri-County Metals metal roof. So in addition to the metal package that's going to be specific for your project, like Brian said, all kinds of accessories, all the way down to the underlayment, all the way down to a one by four purlins that you might use for a certain application, radiant barrier, all kinds of stuff, um, of course, that are peripheral to that full system, but as a matter of convenience, you can make one phone call, have delivered everything that you need for that project. Absolutely. All right, this has been Scott and Brian. We're talking about how to measure that roof. Lots of videos out there on YouTube, but this one is the best. So go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And remember, Tri-County Metals, make your next roof your last.